Asante sana wakili na sasa nitamwalika mtaalamu wa masuala ya uongozi bwana Padi Onyango aendelee kutufafanulia yale yaliyomo kwenye ripoti ya BBI Padi Onyango Your Excellency the President Your Excellency the Deputy President Your Excellency the Right Honorable Prime Minister Ladies and gentlemen good morning I am representing one of the committees that worked on legislation that needs to be changed so that the recommendations of the steering committee can be implemented. There are many uh, legislation that we looked at, but I will only mention a few in the interest of time. But firstly, I'll give preference to special legislation that needs to be given, that we have recommended should be given priority as we move on. The first one is the Persons with Disabilities Act, which has taken 11 years to try and repeal. Your Excellency, we are happy that on the 14th of August 2018, your cabinet in the third meeting adopted a resolution calling for the repeal of the 2003 Persons with Disabilities Act. Secondly, under the special category, we have the Kenya Sign Language Bill, which takes care of the deaf, that that should be also fast tracked. Under the special category, and finally, Your Excellency, on 26th of March, 2015, in your State of the Nation address, you offered apologies to Kenyans for the historical injustices suffered, and you directed the Treasury to establish a fund called Restorative Justice Fund. In recognition of that, and to give effect to that directive, we have proposed the enactment of a legislation known as Reparative and Restorative Justice uh, Bill, which then will be considered at Parliament. The essence of this is that all historical injustices as covered in the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Commission will be implemented within a time frame. And you know some of these uh, injustices include the Wagala massacre, for example, extrajudicial killings. People have been assassinated over time. Now the committee has recommended that um, this be given priority. On the other legislation, which are facilitative of the recommendations that are contained in the constitutional proposals, which my colleague Tom has presented, I will start with the election laws. There are many of them. One is the IBC Act. The IBC Amendment Bill seeks to reform the IBC first to give it strength and independence from any interference. Two, to make it possible for inclusion, for example, when the time for recruiting commissioners and officials, the persons with disability, for example, are taken into account in terms of Art Article 554.2 of the Constitution. In reforming the Constitution, we are all aware that there is a vacancy at the moment. We only have three commissioners. We should have seven, and that was the recommendation of the, um, the, the committee has given. In this regard, a process has been recommended where the existing commissioners will be vetted afresh, as is the case with other vetting that we have had in the past, and then those suitable will continue in office. We are saying that there will be a panel to do that vetting and appointment. So we will re the recommendation is that the, the four vacancies that are there should be filled in the next six months. That is the recommendation that has been given. On the Political Parties Act, 
the political parties have been uh, <laughs> obligated when they're doing party primaries to take care of the interests of marginalized youth, women, persons with disabilities. And in case of persons with disabilities, there is a recommendation that persons with disabilities who are members of political parties form an electoral college within the party so that they elect one of their own rather than being given someone to represent them. And then we have made a recommendation under the Political Parties Act whether the, we, have, we have proposed that um, all disputes within arising out of a nomination during the political campaign or primaries should be resolved by the party, within the party. And therefore, anybody going to the district, political party's district tribunal must show that they have exhausted internal party mechanism before they can be, uh, before they can be allowed to move the tribunal. And that applies also to petitions. On uh, Election Offences Act, <coughs> we have made stringent measures, we have recommended measures that any person causing violence be barred from taking part in succeeding elections for five years. And again, it has been recommended that where violence is measured against women candidates, the fact that that violence will be an aggravating factor. So, for example, if you happen to assault a woman outside the election period, then that will be common assault. But if you assault a woman within the election period, then you will be given a higher penalty or sentence than in ordinary circumstances. Yes, on the on election campaign financing, on election campaign financing, there is a requirement. There is a requirement. There is a requirement. It is recommended that candidates campaigning or seeking state office should declare the sources of their funds. The idea is to save the sovereignty of the country and to ensure that we have the right people in leadership to do the right thing. I now come to the, uh, there are others, but now we'll go to the police. We are recommending that IPOA be elevated to the status of a commission, a chapter 15 commission, for purposes of oversight and ensuring that there is discipline in the police force. So that issues of extrajudicial killings associated with the police should be a thing of the past. I have just seen Baby Pendo is here, the, the, the parents of Baby Pendo is here. That is something which should be a thing of the past in our, our existence. I don't want to go further. There are others my colleagues have mentioned, and I would like to leave it there for now. Read the, the legislation, read the administrative function. Yeah. Asante sana Padi Yonyango na asante sana Wakili. Na baada ya kuwasikiliza wataalamu, naomba sasa utukubalie mheshimiwa rais tuwape nafasi wananchi wachache na viongozi wachache waweze kutoa maoni yao. And I wish to most humbly and with utmost humility request all the speakers to observe terms strictly as we agreed 
and to also respect the program as set so that when we invite you, it's only you and you won't invite somebody else to speak, most kindly. Na kwa sasa mwesh miwa rais da omba, uniruhusu ni mwite Mama Pendo, Baba Pendo na Joseph Mainakawe wazungumze kwa kifupi. Mama Pendo karibu. Mheshimiwa Rais, Mabibi na Mabwana, habari asubuhi. Kwa majina naitwa Lensa Chieng, mimi ndio mama Pendo. Na kama familia ya Pendo, si tumekuja kuhubiri amani ili tusonge mbe, mbele. Sitaki kusema mengi, mmejua chenye ilifanyika wakati uchaguzi mwezi wa Nane, 2017, a flower was uprooted from my garden and it can never be replaced. I can be given another person, but not the same person like Pendo. Kwa wanasiasa, sisi wana Kenya, mukikuja kwetu, muze siara zenyu, tu, figedebe, wale onyo tujashinda, tukubaliana na mwenye ameshinda tusongeshe Kenya yetu mbe, mbele na mnapokuja kwetu mchunge chenye chenye natoka kwa ulimi yenu msifanye sisi youth tupigane na nyinyi mnaendelea mbele we sema tu yako yenye uko nayo tukubaliane nayo vile BBI tujisomee nikikubali nipige tik nikikata nipige x tusongeshe Kenya mbele na nawaomba wanasiasa ikuwe mwisho kwa kiti nilitendeka 2017 mwanamke yote asilie mtoto wake na familia yote yoyote isilie mtu wake msituache sisi victim tubaki na pain and agony while you you move on wakati yenye mtumepata msiba kuja kwetu uangalie how are those victims faring on and let the relation move on president uhuru kenyatta i've never seen you face to face but i know you are a cheerful person and i was happy when right when <laughs> honorable raila came and shake hands so that we can move the country forward ndio maana nasemanga mwanamke anakuanga gangari mwanamke anza mpiga mwanaume anza piga mwanamke afure uso akiamka asubuhi jirani amuulize nini likufanya atasema liteleza na atacheka ili asitoe hiyo uchi wake ikuwe hivyo tusitoe uchi ye, uchi wetu tukue kama mwanamke gangari As Asante sana mama Asante sana niombe sasa umshike mtoto baba Pendo naye aweze kuja kusema kwa kifupi baba Pendo karibu Mheshimiwa Rais mabibi na mabwana amjambo Mko salama mimi kwa majina naitwa Joseph Abanda, mimi ndio baba Pendo. So imekuwa hivyo ikafanyika but lazima nchi endelee mbele. Ya kwanza nataka kusongeza rais na mheshimiwa Raila kwa kuleta handshake juu venye wale walileta wali, wali handshake dunia ilikuwa na amani. So the only thing nataka kusema the only thing nataka kusema saa hii jameni ni wa Kenya. Wa Kenya tuko watu wazuri usidanganya ni hapa ati siasa hivi ikifika saa ya nini matuti pale mtu anakuja na kumalizia sira na huko kwa hapo so ituweke tu kama like i say like a football pitch patana gormaia na fc gormaia imepiga fc fc imepiga gormaia maisha yanaendelea mbele hakuna mtu anaoliwa ndio so tukishakuwa hivyo 
kenye taendelea mbele na kenye tasonga mbele but ningependa kuomba rais uhuru kinyata kwamba venye mshukiliana na mheshimiwa rais odinga msiachane mkono jamani msiachane mkono jamani msonge mbele na bbi venye nimesikia kwa uchache tu pia nilipewa nimesoma kidogo tu naona ni kitu taleta mabadiliko kwa maisha yetu so tupige deba bbi tusonge mbele tusiwane tusimwagi damu tena wacha damu ya mwanangu ndiko ya mwisho kuwatika election kumwagika tena wacha damu ya mwanangu ndiko ya mwisho kwa hiyo machache tu nasema asante na mheshimiwa rais kumbuka familia bibi pendo mtuache hivyo sana bwana mmetuacha tunateseka bwana asante ni Mheshimiwa Rais, mabibi na mabwana, majina yangu naitwa Joseph Maina Kawe kutoka kaunti ya Nakuru katika sub county ya Molo. Nimesimama hapa kwa sababu mimi ni mmoja wa wale ambao wameadhirika sana na vita vya baada ya uchaguzi ambao ilianza kunisumbua nikiwa miaka mitatu na hadi hadi siku hii ya leo niko mjini Molo nikikodesha nyumba na kwetu ninako nina, nina kwetu ambako ni kule juu upande wa kule soi na haya mambo yote kutoka mwaka wa 1992 kulitokea vita na wakati huo mwajua ya kwamba mtoto wa miaka mitatu hawezi akapiga kura hana kitaburisho siwezi kujua ni mambo gani yaliyonipata ili niweze kuomba kwetu nyumba zikachomwa ngombe zetu zikaibiwa na mambo mengi yakafuatilia tukafika mjini Molo baada ya kipindi tena tulirudi na kukawa na amani tukarudi mwaka wa 1997 yale maneno yakajirudia na ikawa ya kwamba tena kile kidogo ambacho tulikuwa tumeleta pamoja na mama yetu mjane ikawa ya kwamba tena kimeharibika sio kwa sababu ya jambo lingine ni kwa sababu ya matukio ya baada ya siasa mwaka wa tatu ikawa hivyo mwaka wa tano wakati wa wako draft ika, ikarudia hivyo na mwaka wa 2008 ikawa ndiyo ilikuwa mbaya kuliko zote ombi langu siku hii ya leo ni ya kwamba jameni Ninavosikia kama vile nimesikia ikielezwa kama vile nimeiangalia nimekuwa nikiuliza tiba itatoka wapi tiba ambayo inaweza ponya taifa letu mara moja na mwisho kwa sababu kuna wakati tulidhania ya kwamba kwa sababu ya kupata kiongozi wa kabila letu tutapata amani lakini pia hata wakati tulipata hivyo amani hatukuipata jameni ninaposoma document hii na kama dio itakuwa tiba ombi langu ni hili nisaidieni kwa sababu siku hii ya leo mametu alisukumwa na hata leo yuko kaburini baada ya depression nyingi na mimi naomba ya kwamba kama kuna kitu ambacho singetaka watoto wangu wakione na vizazi vya baadaye ni yale mambo ambayo nimeyapitia Mungu awabariki na Mungu abariki taifa la Kenya Nitamwalika sasa mheshimiwa Kate Waruguru na Alex Matere waonge kwa niaba ya vijana. Mheshimiwa. Bibi ai, unaniambia Kenya moja. Bibi ai. Bibi ai. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, on this historic day katika ukumbi wa Bomas On a day when you are born and you are celebrating your birthday. Happy birthday your excellency. Mimi nitasema tu machache kuhusu maneno ya vijana. Sisi kama vijana tumechoka kila baada ya miaka tano. Vijana wanatumika kufanya campaign, campaign ikikwisha maneno yao inakwishia pale. Kando na hiyo uchafuzi ambao huwa unatokea biashara za sisi kama vijana zinaharibika 
And we want to thank the Hanshik, the President, and Right Honorable Raila Omoro Odinga for inviting us on this occasion to have a national dialogue and a national conversation because there is no country without us as young people in this Republic of Kenya. Mwashimua Rais, wewe unakaa kama Nehemiah. Umekubali kutuita sisi kama wa Kenya, tujadiliane na tuongeju ya kuta ambazo zimeanguka. Tunakuomba ufunge masikio yako mkiwa na mwashimua Raila Odinga na viongozi ambayo kwa midomo yao na vinyo vyao wanasema wantaka kuona Kenya ikiendelea mbele. Conversation ya BBI lazima ikuwe ni conversation ya patriotism and not a conversation of 2022 politics or 2027 politics. We want to see sisi kama wa mama, vijana wetu wakimaliza standard 8 ama form 4, the government will be taking care of our youth as opposed to us investing in individuals ambao wanakuambia tutakueka ndani ya serikali ijayo. Sisi tunataka haki yetu ilindwe na serikali ndani ya katiba, ndani ya BBI, tunaomoka kwa katiba na sio kuomoka kwa biashara ya kutengwa. Kwa hayo mengi na machache, naomba mungu wa bariki. Your Excellency the President, Your Excellency the Deputy President, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, it is with profound humility that I stand before you today representing the more than 39 million young people of our country. Your Excellency, it is the former President of the United States, J.F. Kennedy, who said that the future prospects of a nation can be directly measured by the kind of investment that its leadership bestow on the young people. And as I stand here today, I know when the introduction was being done that the head of secretariat of the BBI task force together with the secretariat are actually young people. That uh, it was actually very inconceivable that a young person from the western region, Transoya County for instance, can have the opportunity of standing and addressing such a gathering in Kenya today. If that is anything to go by, then the future of Kenya is indeed luminous. Your Excellency, first allow me to join the other speakers in congratulating you and uh, the Right Honorable Prime Minister for the magnanimity introducing the handshake that has given forth to the BBI. One thing that I'm sure of is that when the history of our nation will be written, your names will be written in the golden pages of our, that book. Your Excellency, Allow me secondly to appreciate the task force because they went round and they collected the views and aspirations of the young people and I can confidently report to you today that the views, the aspirations and the perspective of the young people are in the document as we speak. In the annexure of that document, the task force recognizes the youth as a special segment upon which the foundation of a peaceful, cohesive and prosperous nation will be built on. Secondly, Your Excellency, the youth of our country have been feeling that they have been left out. And we have a common cliche that if you're not on the table, then you're on the menu. And the youth of this country have been on the menu for far too long. <laughs> At this particular moment, when we are launching the BBI report, I'm happy and delighted as any other uh, youth from this country that the report gives us a table on the seat by introducing a youth commission that will ensure our issues are mainstreamed and that we have serious engagement with government and other and state actors. <laughs> Secondly, and, uh, we have a problem and a very great challenge in terms of unemployment and unemployment of the young people. The report faces it in three phases. That one, we have TVETs that are able to train our people with skills and uh, 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 with skills so that they can be able to develop our country. And secondly, we have the Biashara Mashinani that is also part and parcel of the document. And thirdly, we have business incubation centers that are going to the world level. With all this together, merged together, you can be rest assured that the young people at Mashinani are going to change their prospects and also the prospects of this country. In the language of Mashinani, I can tell you, Your Excellency, Vijana wanasema ya kwamba mbogi za mta zinaenda kuomoka na BBI. Lastly, Your Excellency, 
as we celebrate the gains that are going to come with BBI, we should also be wary of the political class. And as the youth of this country, we've experienced the politicians who have mastered the art of conning, conniving, confusing, and taking advantage of our youth and cutting corners with their future. We are here today to give them notice. We've seen some of them who are parading inventions that uh, happened during the 16th century of a one-wheel machine. And we are telling them this morning that the 16th century inventions cannot be used to solve the challenges of the 21st century. Because reggae is back, Your Excellency, because reggae is back, allow me to quote Bob Marley, and he sang and said that you can lie to some people sometimes, you can lie to some people all the time, but you cannot lie to all the people all the time. In conclusion, Your Excellency, Martin Luther King said that all of us, and I paraphrase, that all of us must endeavor to fly. But if we cannot fly, then we run. And if we cannot run, then we walk. And if we cannot walk, then we crawl. The message of the young people today is that they will going to fly with you, that they are going to run with you, that they are going to walk with you. And if circumstances force us, then we are going to crawl with you to ensure that your legacy is secured and delivered, and also that the prospects of the BBI are united. Thank you very much. Asante sana, asante sana, Mweshimiwa Mishiboko, Rene Mayaka, na Governor Charlie Tingilu, wataongea kwa niyaba ya kina mama. Mweshimiwa. Mweshimiwa Raisi wa Taifa la Kenya, Mweshimiwa Uru Mwigai Kenyata, Naibu wa Rais, Mweshimiwa Raila Amolo Odinga, Itifaki zote zikizingatiwa mabibi na mabwana Kenya hoi Waswahili wanasema hayawi hayawi uwa Leo tumefikia siku muafaka Siku muimu ambayo tunazindua ripoti ya BBI Ripoti ambayo ilikuwa inazungumzia kujenga madaraja Madaraja ya kuleta amani katika taifaletu la Kenya Madaraja ya kujenga umoja katifa taifaletu la Kenya. Madaraja ya kuleta ufanisi wa maendeleo katika nanjani. Kwa niaba ya kina mama wenzangu viongozi na kina mama wa Kenya. Sisi tunaunga mkono ripoti hii kwa sababu imeangazia haki za kimsingi za kina mama. Tukiangalia mwishimi wa rais, BBI imezungumzia ya kwamba katika nafasi ya ugavana, gavana akiwa mwanamke naibu wake atakuwa mwanamume. Hivyo basi jambo hili litaweza kutupatia ngazi sisi kama kina mama wa taifa la Kenya tuweze kupata hatua ya kuingia katika uongozi wa ugavana katika kaunti zetu. Vile vile katika seneta sasa hivi tulikuwa tu na maseneta wateuliwa 16 na wale watatu tu wachache waliochaguliwa. Lakini sasa tutapata sauti ya kina mama waliochaguliwa kikura watakao kuwa na haki ya kupiga kura pale katika bunge la seneti na kuweza kufanya maamuzi ya kuhusu mambo ya county government zetu pale mashinani. Mheshimiwa rais tunajua hapo awali tulikuwa na wale kina mama saba katika National Assembly. Lakini sasa hivi katika ripoti ya BBI tunaona kuna formula nyingine ambazo zinazungumziwa ili kuona ya kwamba tutaweza kuhakikisha ile sheria ya thuluthi mbili ya jinsia itaweza kupatikana. Tunaomba sana wale wataalamu wale tunawaita experts waweze kuweka formula ambayo haitaleta tena utata ifikie ya kwamba eti bunge la taifa liweze kuvunjwa tunasema ya kwamba mkenya aisome bbi report tusiweze kudanganyika na porojo tusiweze kushika propaganda huno si wakati wa kudharauliana huno si wakati wa matusi huno si wakati wa kejeli huno ni wakati sisi wa Kenya tuje pamoja tujizatiti tuwe kidete tuweze kufungua ukrasa mwingine wa taifa la Kenya lenye umoja amani ufanisi na maendeleo katika nyanja zetu jamani 
mwenzako anaposema mimi naipinga katiba muite karibu mzungumzie mpe ushauri aielewe kinagaubwaga ndiposa tuweze kufanya maamuzi na mimi kwa yale mengi yamezungumziwa ambayo tumeyapata si elimu si universal health si mambo ya mashamba si mambo ya kilimo jamani tusikose mwana na maji ya moto tushikane kidete kimoja kama wa Kenya tuhakikishe tuna ukurasa mwingine wakati wa siasa ukija tuwe kama wenzetu majirani wa Tanzania tunapiga kura na tunafanya uiano na tunakuwa na mapenzi twakupenda sana mheshimiwa rais twakupenda sana mheshimiwa Raila kwa sababu umetuenzi sisi kama kina mama endelea kutuenzi uache urithi wako ama legacy yako iwe itazungumziwa na vizazi vijavyo kuhusiana na uongozi wa kina mama vijana na wale mavu asanteni Your Excellency the President of Kenya, ladies and gentlemen, all protocol observed. Your Excellency, elections such as ours in previous years have always come out with an aspect of winner takes all, where some Kenyans end up laughing all the way to the bank as others laugh all the way to the toilet. Your Excellency, we are particularly happy with the handshake that happened between you and the Right Honorable Prime Minister Raila Amolo Odinga on March 2018. That for some of us came as a shock, but we were quickly very happy about it because as a result of it, the country that is Kenya has started to be in the process of ensuring that we are no longer polarized. Your Excellency, as the women of Kenya, we are particularly very happy with the BBI. Wamama tumefurai ama tujafurai? Tumefurai ama tujafurai? We are happy, Your Excellency, because in particular when I talk about the Senate, where now we will have our women being able to vote, and now we even want to have the formula coming back so that the women of Kenya in the Senate can actually vote for a higher percentage for water, and they can vote for a higher percentage for women empowerment at the county level. Your Excellency, we are happy with the Youth Commission that we must say right now that we want it to be explicit leaving no room for maneuvers and variances. Your Excellency, as a member of County Assembly, from the County Assembly of Nyamira, we are particularly happy with the 35% that is coming to the devolution. We are also happy with 5% for ward development because this has been a thorny issue for many members of County Assemblies for a very long time. At least now we are able to ensure that Article 35 is taken care of. Sisi kama ma MCA tunangoja the next process na tutacheza kama sisi. Your Excellency, as a young Kenyan, I recall that one day on the 25th of July 2019, together with four other young ladies, you gave us a platform as presidential candidates in a reality TV. And because of that platform, Your Excellency, I want to assure you that together with other like-minded young Kenyans, we are starting a Baraza La Vijana forums to enable our young people to have discussions on the BBI reports so that we can make informed decisions. Your Excellency, as I conclude, I'd like to say, as the mothers of this country, we will nurture the BBI reports like a baby. We ask the fathers to join us so that 50 years from now, our children, our, our children's children, can celebrate the BBI 50th birthday. And speaking of birthdays, Your Excellency, on behalf of the women of Kenya, I'd like to wish you a happy birthday. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless our nation of Kenya. And may the good bless all of you. Thank you very much.
Your Excellency, Rais Huru Mwigai Kenyatta, Your Excellency, Mwishmiwa former Prime Minister Raila Molo Odinga, Mwishmiwa Deputy President, Mabibi Nabambuana Hamjambu, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Let me just say I have been invited here to speak on behalf of women, but I also speak on behalf of Kenyans. And to say that uh, today is a great day. Ten years ago, we met in this very same place and we promulgated a new constitution. We said then that we we'll continue to make any amendments that are necessary. Ten years after, we have reflected, we have seen some of the things that needs to be changed and we are here to change them. And we are going to change them so that we can get everybody included in the running affairs of this nation. We do not want anybody to be left behind. Therefore, Your Excellency and the former Prime Minister, thank you so much for coming together in a timely way, shook hands, agreed, and we put every Kenya to be part of this. I would like to say, Your Excellency, from where I'm sitting as the governor of Kitui County, first and foremost, I really say thank you that in this constitution, we are going to have extra resources that will go machinani. And that is what a lot of people have been advocating. We have been getting 15%. Now we are talking about 35%. Surely 35% will get Kenyans out of Opukara, We'll get Kenyans out of Maskini. And these are the things that we have all been fighting for since the independence 57 years ago. Today is the time for we leaders to appreciate with the more resources on the ground. Using those resources well, for sure Kenya will start growing. And for the leadership to understand that if we use the resources well, we can now actually implement our big four agenda, ensuring that every Kenyan has food, ensuring that we can get universal health care, ensuring that we can manufacture and the leadership to sell our goods, both in the country and outside the country. Small, small handouts, small, small handouts coming from leaders is has no place in this country. Let us get every Kenyan working for what they believe we believe in. Your Excellency, having said that, first and foremost, I also want to insist that these resources must make sure that Kenyans get better health care, that women can get water into their kitchens, that we can have food on the table. For me, that is the basic needs that we have fought for for many years. Your Excellency, National Assembly issue of two-third gender rule has not been addressed in this proposed constitution. Remember, there is a serious threat of Chief Justice Maraga that we must have the two-third gender rule. And when they say that, it is not others, it is we women who are targeted. Your Excellency, the seven depositions that will be given to the National Assembly, then put it there that they will all, all of them go to women. All of them, without exception. Your Excellency, you know, I, I wear two hats. I'm a party leader, and I'm also a woman, and I'm a governor, and the only one governor you didn't even call. So let me take, take three minutes. Your Excellency, finally, the executive is very silent. We know those positions up there. It is easy and we know it can happen. That what Wakai, Fahali, now you do, they will do always what they do. We want those five positions to ensure there is a two that gender rule applied. <laughs> Your Excellency, it is said. It is said, and it must be said all the time, where two or three are gathered to make policy decisions, there's got to be gender rule applied. 
I want to thank you. God bless Kenya. Tuingie mashinani, tuuze hii katiba. Hii katiba ni lazima ipite. Asante sana. God bless you. God Asante bless you. sana. Governor atakayetoa maoni yake sasa ni Ashura Michael na atasaidiwa na mtafsiri Flora Atieno. His Excellency, Honorable President, Uhuru Kenyatta, His Right Honorable uh, Raila Amolo Odinga, our Deputy President, Honorable Ruto, all protocol observed. I'm pleased to be here to witness the milestone that we've been waiting for a long time. I appreciate on behalf of my community, which is the deaf community, BBI is not about Honorable Raila and my, my President Uhuru. BBI is about me and you. It's to promote diversity in our nation. <laughs> BBI is going to unite us. We have persons with abilities, we have the women, we have youth. We've been all enacted into the BBI. My name is Ashura Michael, a graduate of Nairobi University and taking law in the same university. <laughs> this BBI is to change our lives for the better, to change our life for all of us to live as we, uh, as we want. I appreciate you, and I would like to ask everyone to read this document. Read keenly. Don't let anyone read for you. <laughs> Thank you for the good work that you're doing. As persons with disabilities, we have benefited in the BBI. Article 54.2 of the Constitution, I'm happy that the word progressive have been removed and it will make sure that persons with disabilities access different uh, positions. We have the disability bill that has been in the, uh, how in the National Assembly for a long time, awaiting debate. It will make sure it's implemented within two years. We have the Kenya policy on guide uh, and unity to diversity. It's going to make sure that our positions are not lost in this document. Right now, right now 17 counties don't have, re don't have representative of persons with disabilities, but I'm sure with the BBI, we are going to be represented in all the counties. <laughs> I'd like to encourage my brothers and sisters to go through the document. The aspiring governors, I would like to encourage you to, to kindly appoint persons with disabilities to be your deputies. <laughs> Don't listen from anyone. Don't listen to anyone. Kindly take your time to read this document, and I believe it's going to change your mind. Naniki Malizia, Mutukuf Rais. I'd like to thank you so much for uniting us making our country best to develop for the, our children. Thank you for improving our economy. Finally, uh, recently you went to Kisumu. Nani kaskia ukisema unatafuta mpango wakando. Najua mama alikubali. Babangu Raila yuko hapa, ako tayari kuchukua mahari. Na... Ndugu yangu hapa, Deputy President, akikubali, atakuwa best man. Sasa, na mama wataifa, tutaendelea kubuild bridges pamoja. Na sasa, mtoto wa BBI atazaliwa. Asanteni sana. Tumpungie mkono hewani, tumpungie mkono hewani. Asante, asante sana. Kwa niyamba ya fanyi biyashara hapa nchini, asante, asante. Kwa niyamba ya fanyi biyashara hapa nchini, Nick Nesbitt wa Kepsa, Mike Raba na Richard Muteti wataongea kwa kifupi. Karibuni. Nick, with three, three minutes kindly, so that we are able to move the program. Na wakati ya nakuja, nitakubusha wale wote ambao wataongea, 
tulikubaliana kwa heshima dakika tatu. Asante. Thank you. Your Excellency, good morning, happy birthday on behalf of the private sector and everybody. Right Honorable Rilo Dinga, Deputy President, Honorable William Ruto, distinguished guests, all protocols observed. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nick Nesbitt, and I'm chairman of KEPSA, the Private Sector Alliance. But I'm standing here not really to talk perhaps only on behalf of private sector, but also to talk on behalf of the multi-sectoral forum. This is an organization or a group of organizations from the religious, the civil society, the media, professionals, youth, women groups that all came together at the end of 2018 to talk about the ills of our country and the positives of our country. And we came together and presented a report to the BBI to address what we thought would help move the country forward. And we're very happy and pleased, Your Excellency, to read many of our recommendations and see that they have been included in the BBI report. And for that, to the BBI team, I say asanteni and thank you very much. So my comments are, uh, I hope to be very brief here, but what I want to talk about is how do we create uh, an inclusive economy and I'm coming from the private sector, the economy side. How do we make sure it's fair and equitable that youth, women, and even the elderly can participate? How do we make sure that this is a country that improves its competitiveness so that the SMEs in Kenya can expand in the region and expand in the world? And to do that, we have a few points. One of them is we must adopt an ethos of self-regulation. We talk about it as Nyumba Kumi, but we must all become our brother and sister's keepers. That means as professionals, that means as people in the wards at all levels, we must bring honesty and integrity to our work and we must call out people who are not doing the same. We must ensure that in this inclusive economy, we can ensure that all the people who want to participate in programs, in projects, in companies, in tenders, can do that safely and they can be certain to win. This issue of he tender ni yahawa must stop. We must ensure that young people and women can win fair and square. We must build an export-led economy. We must ensure that everything that we do in terms of the money that we raise as companies and the taxes that we pay is put to good use. We must ensure the public is engaged in all sectors of the economy and we reach out to everybody and ensure that we can move forward together. So with those few words, I just want to say thank you that our report was included. We, as business people, always do handshakes. We thank you for your handshakes and we like the whole concept of shaking hands. However, the pandemic has made it a little diff more difficult so we give a fist bump to everybody and we wish us all a very good day. And thank you very much for listening to us. Thank you. Uh, Your Excellency, the President. Your Excellency, the Deputy President. Your Excellency, the Right Honorable Prime Minister. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. Uh, my name is Michael Raba. I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the SME sector. I'm the founder of a group of companies called the Homeboys Entertainment Group of Companies. We're in the business of entertainment, sports, media, and broadcasting. Homeboys was founded 20 years ago while I was in university. I began my business by selling cassettes to Matatus. In our past 20 years of existence, the company has now grown to employ over 200 young people whose livelihoods fully depend on the growth and sustenance of the entertainment industry. Your Excellency, it's not been easy building and sustaining the business under the current prevailing environment, especially being in the geocallier sector. However, with commitment 
perseverance and hard work. We have soldiered on and have been very successful in expanding the business as we continue creating employment opportunities for young people. Despite the challenges, Your Excellency, we are however proud to state today that by the end of this year, we shall be listing in the NSC, the first of its kind. Uh, this, Indija Excellency, is a milestone and will be a first for business like ours in the geocardi sector. This goes to show to my fellow entrepreneurs, with hard work, vision, commitment, and an enabling environment, and repeat the terms, enabling environment, our dreams can come true. So, Your Excellency, what does BBI mean for small businesses? As for the document, its first aim is to reduce the hurdles of setting up small businesses. The cost of doing business shall be reduced. The bureaucracy of getting paperwork shall be reduced as well. And this shall encourage businesses in the smallest sector to thrive. Secondly, it aims to give youth-owned enterprises, youth enterprises a seven-year tax break. That is music to our ears. Seven-year tax break, meaning <laughs> small businesses can now set up and pay taxes seven years once they establish themselves. I think for us, had this been happened a few years ago, it would have been much, much bigger than we are right now. Thirdly, it aims to set up business incubation centers across the country for the purposes of providing access to finance, advice, mentorship, and access to, to market and to government contracts. These are sort of resources we never had as we set up our business 20 years ago. So this, again, is a big positive that BBI brings to the table. Again, having been a university student, I know what it means to have to pay your health loan immediately you start to get your first job. The BBI proposes to give us a four-year moratorium, a grace period in which to settle down, start our businesses, then begin paying our loans. That, again, a big plus for those who've just come out of university. Again, BBI aims to increase the county shareable revenue from 15% to 35%. That means that there shall be a lot of business opportunities for young people right in the county level. No need to rush to the city to get this job, all right? It also aims to create a fund at the ward where 5% of all revenue county receives, 5% gets to the county at the ward level meaning there will be enhanced business opportunity for young people in the local wards. And lastly, it supports the setup of affordable and reliable access to digital platforms and villages. This will promote e-commerce at all sectors. Anybody with products in the village can then access the market both locally and internationally. I think, Your Excellency, this will be a big positive boost for businesses in the country. Your Excellency, as we build bridges, the BBI will also help build businesses. I think the second issue is business as well, not this beyond bridges. So building bridges, building businesses initiatives. Thank you very much and may God bless you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jambo. My name is Richard Moteti. I'm, I'm representing the National Federation of Geocali Association and the National Coalition of Informal Sector Coalition on Business Continuity. Your Excellency, I'm happy today to inform you that uh, among the crowds, among the hundreds of the people here, is the National Chairman of Kenya National Hawkers Association, Makofi Kwa Hawkers, and the National Chairman of the Kenya National Federation of Geocali Association. Your Excellency, we also have the National Chairman of the Nduti Sector, United Boda Boda Associations. I have just a few points today. Your Excellency, the informal economic sector is the biggest single employer in this country. It employs more than 16.4 million people who put their food on the table. And the informal economic sector has been the biggest victim of politicians. They are the people who vote and they are the people who fight. They are the people who manufacture the jambes and the arrows you see. And they are the people who are confused for the first time in this document, the SMEs or MSMEs are recognized officially by this document. It has never been in, in recognized in this country. Your Excellency, a few points that are making us support this document, namely the Constitution. The people talk about Kenya, the importance of the SME sector. 
but they have never constituted them officially and mainstreamed them. This document is mainstreaming the MSME sector into the constitution. That's a very big plus for us. Your Excellency, MSMEs do business. The government is the biggest purchaser. Your Excellency, when our people are not paid on time, they die because they have nothing, they have no money to sustain themselves as the big boys. So if you give our people business and you take more than two months, they, that's why Your Excellency, most of our people work with medicine in their pocket. But I'm happy to inform you today that this document talks about the prompt payment bill, whereby now it will be a mandatory for our people to be paid on time. They will not be begging. And this is going to create employment, it's going to create jobs, and it's going to give hope to millions of Kenyans in this country. Your Excellency, we are talking about in this document the business incubation centers. That we are going to have business inc information incubation centers in all areas, Mbaka Mashinani, that will not be coming from Kisumu, from Machakos to Nairobi to seek for help. That your small business will be nurtured where you are, Makofi BBI. For the first time, we are also talking about business registration by the youth, the women, and people with disability, majority of whom are in, in the informal economic sector. This is the first time that they are going to be mainstreamed in the Constitution. The other time, Simekuwa ni story na porojo. This time, they are going to be mainstreamed inside, and they are going to be measured, and their supplies are going to be appreciated. Your Excellency, lastly, we are talking about tax holidays. It has never been in this country before that a startup starts paying tax immediately. So he starts, he's knocked by taxes, he dies. This document says, start your small business and do it for seven years. Nurture yourself, then you will grow. Ain't it a good thing? Lastly, Your Excellency, the informal economic sector in this country, people think that it is not organized. We have an elaborate structure in this country. We have an elaborate structure in the region. I am the head of the Secretariat of the Informal Sector in the East Africa region, and one of the messages they have for this country is that they are waiting for this BBI to pass, empower our MSEs, and then they encourage their countries also to have a BBI. Thank you very much. Naomba unruhusu mweshimu wa rais ni waite sasa askofu David Ogide na Ibrahim Ridome waonge kwa niamba ya viongozi wa kidini. Bishop na Ibrahim Karibuni. And I will still remind all of us who are speaking that we kindly stick to the three minutes kindly. Thank you. Your Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, Your Excellency Deputy President, and Right Honorable Prime Minister, we are delighted to be here this day. As a religious community, our greatest concern for the nation is peace, that we live in a peaceful environment where everybody is able to do that which they would want to do without interference, without fear uh, of anything happening to them. And so over the years, we have tried our best to be peace brokers for this country. I was privileged in 2017 uh, after the contested results of the elections, uh, that I was part of a small team uh, that from the diplomatic community, from the business sector, from civil society, and the religious communities under the leadership of the former U.S. Ambassador Robert Godek. For several months, we engaged in a shuttle diplomacy committed to seeing this country get back to normalcy. Sadly, both sides were extremely hard. 
And I can tell you it is, was one of the most difficult responsibilities that I've ever had. It therefore came as a great and pleasant surprise when Your Excellency and Right Honorable Prime Minister stood on the steps of Harambe House in the famous handshake. We were delighted that you also spoke of creating a national conversation on issues that bedevil this nation every electoral season. This has been one of our key plans uh, to create a national conversation. In fact, our group was loosely known as National Conversation. Your Excellency, I say all this to let you know that the spirit of national conversation has been with some of us for a very long time, well before BBI. This is because we have believed that unless and until we address the cancer that is this nation, we will never have enduring peace. To continue with business as usual is to deceive ourselves. It is just a matter of time, and this country will one of these days explode to unquenchable flames. For this reason, we want to unequivocally loud the efforts that have been made by the steering team and by your leadership uh, in addressing these issues. Your Excellency, we however have some very serious concerns. In this nation, we have developed a very dangerous tendency of politicizing everything. Even a very important matter as constitution making gets shrouded in political intrigue. That is why we are finding ourselves with laws that cannot satisfy the desire of the uh, political class, but do not effectively address our national needs and aspirations. It is in this light that I want to plead with our political leaders. Please allow the current process to objectively lay a foundation for the future of this nation. We must therefore remember that the laws you make today will tie your hands and your feet tomorrow. The liberties you take away today will imprison you tomorrow. It is most unfortunate that the politics of our nation is based on divide and rule. Politicians somehow believe that the only way to succeed is to divide us into dichotomous categories of us versus them. Yet, political interests shift rapidly. Between 2017 and 2020, the political formations have changed significantly. In fact, I want to prophesy that it will not be a surprise before 2022 that Dr. William Ruto and Honorable Raila Odinga will be on the same side. <laughs> it is a fact that no nation has ever become great through division. The Bible is clear that where there is unity, the Lord commands a blessing. A cord of three strands cannot be broken. Your Excellency, perhaps it is time that hustlers should pause their hustling for a moment. And the reggae dancers pause their dance for a moment and join together in a serious Jerusalem dance for the sake of the peace and the unity of this nation. After all, DJ Master KG and his sister remind us that the new Jerusalem is our ultimate home. Finally, Your Excellency, in 2005 and in the 2010 referendum, the church said no because of various major principles. We would like to see this addressed. We have noticed that the pillar of religion and faith seems to be completely missing. Furthermore, the religious freedom bill that was to help the registration of religious groups seems to have been left out. Issues of marriage and family need to be taken care of. Your Excellency, we want to assure you that as a Christian community, after this launch, we are going to review the report and make our position known. If we choose to support it, it will be because we believe it is good for the country. If we find anything contrary, we will call for appropriate amendment. God bless you and thank you for a great work. Amen.
naomba niwaalike sasa Wilson Sosion na Francis Atwoli kwa niaba ya wafanyikazi kwa heshima na niombe na niendelee kuomba we stick to the three minutes mzee tunaweza kuanza na mzee Atwoli because you are here sir kindly Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, the Deputy President, and all delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Hii ni siku ya historia, sababu tumechukusanya na tumepitia safari ya kina kama wa Kenya. As a country and from the labor perspective, it has been very disturbing from 1992. We drive our country into points of uncertainty, killings in every election, 1997, the same, but in 2002, we were more historic and more decisive as a country because we were very optimistic and we came together through NAG, but we lost it again in 2005 during the referendum. We went in different direction. Now, 2007, the same thing. I think, rightly, as has been presented by the Committee of Experts, we agree the document is wonderful. And all what we need moving forward <laughs> is to objectively reflect and open a robust conversation and improve the document and go through a referendum and pass it so that we can have peaceful elections in 2022, and a robust economy that guarantees employment of the youth in this country. There is no solution to the youth except guarantee to decent employment, and that decent employment is in a strong economy. And that explains why, as a labor movement, we were very passionate in campaigning for a handshake even before elections in two, 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 2017, but now that it has come, we urge all Kenyans to close ranks and we stand together and support this document. Where there are gaps, there should be room for us to correct. From the labor movement, we even think the aspect of uh, the Constitutional Commission needs to be worked on more thoroughly so that workers who are the main drivers of the economy can continue enjoying their freedom and right to negotiate without much interference from the institutions that we have created. In overall, we support this process, but we urge more engagement and more friendship as we deal with it. Thank you. Wakati nilisimama hapa last time nikaambia hii document ni document mzuri na inataka ipigwe msasa kidogo wengine wakafika kelele na tulikuwa tunajua ni kwa nini na nataka kushukuru mtukuo fright ulikuwa na nia ulikuwa na sababu na ulikuwa na uwezo na tumeona document Nataka kuwa shukuru wale ma expert Na nataka kuwa pili kwa Kenyans wenzangu Kwa niyaba ya wafanyikazi wa inji hii Kuna vitu vingi ambavyo sisi tuliuliza kama wafanyikazi Vingina vija kuwa sawa Kwa mfano Migomo ya madaktari kila wakati tulisema tuwe na constitutional commission Ili madaktari wakai hospitali kuangalia watoto wetu Mambo ya SRC na madawa ya suwako hapa, Profesor, nikuwa mwenye kiti mdogo wa steering committee, unajua hii kitu inaitua SRC. It contradicts 
Dialogue Convention number 87 and number 98 on free collective bargaining. And Kenya is a signatory to that convention. A dialogue domesticated it here. It is reflected in Article 41 of our current constitution. Kwa hivyo yu ni kitu ya kutolewa. Kwa jili mshara wako ni kati yako na muajini wako. Iyo tutaangalia. Jambo lingine, sisi tulikuwa tumeuliza. Ilikuwa ni mambo ya special seat for special interest. We need to have a constituent. Brother Sosion don't need to go through ODM to become to represent workers in parliament. We need to have our own constituents as workers. And at our governing council, we elect our representatives to represent us in parliament. Not through political parties. Not through my party canu. But hizo tutaangalia wakati wanatengeneza constitutional amendment bill kama haiwezekani jambo kubwa liliangaliwa mambo ya all inclusiveness. Watu wamesema mama Pendo amesema hapa nikatoa machozi. Wakati shida inapotokea sisi wafanyikazi tuko katika miji mikubwa. Ni watoto, wa mama na wafanyikazi ndi wanapata shida. Wengi wakubwa wenzangu wanatoroka. Na katika inji hii, na mimi najua tukufu rais ndugu yako, Raila Amolo Odinga, ni mmoja wao wale wa Kenya. And I should say he's the only one, maybe, after the late Matiba. Amba wanaweza kupeana holiday outside government gazetted holiday. Kwa ndugu yako, mwejimewa, tukufu rais. Akitangasa tu hapa saa hii, watu wasiende kazini na waende uhuru park. Hataki facilitation money. Hataki campaign. That place will be full. Na wakati kazi na mofugwa, sisi mtukufu rais. Ndiyo tunaumia na diyo kwa sababu tunaunga handshake mkono. And I want to support, uh, I want to support the bishop. Politicians, a politician ambaya naona mbali na hila natakia we watu wake mazuri. Please, sisi 2022 ni mbali. Njaa hiko sasa. Na mina taka kuambia hivi. Na musikie na hini ya mwisho nipe na kamoja wa mani elda. And there is no other elda in this Republic of Kenya. <laughs> when we were growing, tulikuwa na Polytechnics. Kazi ya hizi Polytechnics ilikuwa ni kufundisha tailoring, mason, and what have motor mechanics. Wale makanika wa siku hizo mechanics wa siku hizo ambao wa nijifunza hiyo kazi ukiwapatia gari la sasa. Mbalo na automatic, computerized, hawawezi kuendesha. When I was growing, I was trained as a telephone technician. Simu sa kizasa siwezi kutengeneza. People are talking of digital economy, blue economy, smart economy, Tusielekeze watoto wetu kwa mambo ya zamani. The world is changing fast. And we need that tunapereka watoto kwa shule. Na unataka mtoto yaka kitoka kwa shule ufunge tai. Yes! Yes! Raisi hii document nataka kuambia pa moja ukiwa na dugu yako. Musitishwe, musitishwe. Leteni tuwana kwa rifranda. We are the majority. We are the people. We are there. We will get it. Usubui saina itakuwa imepita. Musitishwe. Kenya ni suasitishwe. Utunataka amani. My shop steward. 2008 January Naivacha. Alikufa kiongea na mimi because of tribal clashes.
We don't want to go there. Na tusitishwe sisi. Tusitishwe. <laughs>